Hagerty, Classic Car TV. Hi everyone and welcome to this week's episode of Haggerty Classic Car TV. I'm Jamie Lamont and this week we have a treat in store for you. We travel to Burbank, California to chat with the big dog himself, Mr. Jay Leno. Check it out. Jonathan Klinger standing here with Jay Leno and, and we're going to talk a little bit today about uh, you know, different ways people that get into having an interest in, in uh, classic cars and, and you've got an interesting story yourself. Well, I worked at car dealerships when I was a kid. I worked at a place called Wilmington Ford. I believe I did odometer recalibrations of my area when a new car, when a used car came in. Well, it mistakenly has 115,000 miles on it. We would do the corrective mileage of 15.5. Yeah, yeah, that was my job. <laughs> All right. And then, you know, a lot of the Today shows, especially the focus on the car auctions and, mm -hmm. and the high-end sales, which makes for great entertainment. You know, there's a lot of younger people who, you know, may be interested in old cars, but they think, geez, i got to be a millionaire to have it. Well, not really. To me, the more interesting cars are the cheaper ones. I mean, there are a lot of fancy cars in this garage, but there are a lot of Corvairs, which I think is still the most technically interesting American car ever built. Certainly, you can buy those reasonably cheap. Uh, you know, you just have to sort of be a little bit ahead of it. I mean, to me, I think that the next generation of collectors, when I was a kid, I remember people saying, no one will ever collect Mustangs because they built a million of them their first year. They're everywhere, they'll never be collectible. Well, that's why they're collectible, because people remember them and they want to go back and relive their youth. So I would be on the lookout for first generation Miatas, 91, 92. They seem so simple now, no airbag, no nothing, a five speed, dual overhead cam, uh, first generation Taurus show mid-80s, a stick shift, that aerodynamic styling that was unlike anything in the period, a Yamaha V6 engine, a lot of power, you can pick those up fairly reasonably. Uh, there are quite a few cars out there like, like that. Now, you know, looking into the future, I mean, like this Chevrolet Volt, for example, mm -hmm. I mean, where there's, you know, how many computers and processes that, com that communicate with each other to make it go, I mean, you know, what do you think, uh, you know, as far as when it comes time to have to restore or repair? Well, you know, again, it's to me, my parents never understood rock and roll and until the day they died, they don't quite got it. And I have to admit, when rap first came along, I went, well, this isn't, uh, you know, your old fashioned rock and roll. It, it, you know, it all changes. It's still music. It just, you adapt differently. You know, I had some kids here that were uh, from McPherson. And they're looking at it over there, and I got a bunch of different jets for different Weber carburetors. And they're going, man, how do you figure this stuff yeah. out? Well, I look at them, you know, when they open their laptop and they're tuning the car with the laptop. I don't get that. Okay. So it's just, it's just the next generation you will learn to adapt. You know, I, I think another collector car would be like the first generation Prius. It seems so simple. Oh, this is a little electric thing, and it goes 60, and oh, that'll seem quaint and fun. Mm -hmm to somebody who's maybe parents had one when they were a kid, when they were seven or eight, they're gonna want one of those. So I think the sport is reasonably safe, and instead of just making old uh, intake manifolds and, and Carter carburetors, somebody will come out with circuit boards and chips that will make these old things, then in the future old things, uh, workable again. So I'm not that worried about that. Okay. All right, well thank you so hey, much. thanks a lot. This week's ride along features a Cadillac Eldorado. Let's go for a ride. This week's ride along is in a 1960 Cadillac Eldorado. Here to tell us about it is Jonathan Klinger. Uh, tell us about this huge car. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing small about this car. Um, well, in 1960, Car Life Magazine rated this car as the best buy in the luxury field. And that pretty much sums it up. You know, for 1960, you know, these cars came loaded with options like air conditioning, cruise control, power door locks, power windows, even power vent windows, self-leveling air suspension, all stuff that, you know, we don't think of such of a big deal on today's modern cars. But in 1960, you know, if you had a Cadillac, you had a lot of options that most people did not have or had ever experienced in any of their cars. Tell me though, why is it so big? Well, American cars <laughs> from the 50s in through the 60s, and actually really up until you know the mid 70s, were huge. I mean, that was just it's the way we liked it. So this thing is really about luxury. It is. I mean, it, the the nice thing about cars like this is is you can basically keep up with modern traffic. You know, whether it's on the interstate. Although I think these are more fun cruising on a you know 45 mile an hour road, loading the family up, going to the get some ice cream on a nice summer day. 
course they make awesome parade cars. It's got some pretty serious fins. Yes, you know, the 59 Cadillac, those are known for their outrageous fins, um, which are cool in their own right. But from a purely design standpoint, I think 1960 is a nice compromise. They seem much more in portion with the rest of the car. Now, is this the type of car people collect to drive or collect for value? To me, I think this is a car you own to drive. I, I mean, you can haul five, six people comfortably. You can drive it long distances, um, you know, as long as you can foot the fuel bill. And, uh, you know, and they're a very reliable car, too. So, uh, if you've never driven a living room, uh, you could get in one of these and take a spin. Two couches, nice radio, uh, I don't know, some doilies down here, and candy dishes. It's wonderful. Well, that's it for this week's episode of Haggerty Classic Car TV. Make sure you log on to haggerty.com slash classic car TV for all upcoming episodes and leave your comments below. See you next week.